thank the organizers for putting me on the program. Um, this is joint work with my colleague Gerard Vandenberg. And um, I guess a couple of things. So this is also preliminary. Um, and this is going to be a purely empirical project, which I guess is unusual for me, but seems also unusual for this conference. Um, so we'll see. I think I'll have some interesting data. So the, what's the motivation? So the title is Domestic Violence Over the Business Cycle. So the motivation is that th there seems to be a general perception that, that domestic violence, meaning intimate partner violence, goes up in recessions. Um, so these are just some newspaper headlines um, from The Guardian and different kinds of uh, newspapers. You know, growth and violence against women are feared uh, you know, as recession hits. Um, even Harry Reid, the Senate Majority Leader in the US, was claiming you know, unemployment leads to domestic violence. So recessions are often blamed sort of for, for an increase in intimate partner violence. So but th that's basic, based on anecdotal evidence. So our research question is, is it actually true? So does domestic violence increase over the business cycle? If so, by how much? Can we quantify it? And then we're also interested in the mechanism. Why does it go up if it does? So let me start by a brief literature survey. So there are other papers that look at the link between unemployment and violence. Um, and, and in general, they all find a positive relationship. So there's some older papers by Talchen and co-authors. Uh, Pharma and Tiefenthal is a, a famous paper also. Um, there's a recent bachelor thesis at Yale who's kind of looking at this at issue. And there's a few papers in medical journals. They all do find a positive relationship. However, a problem in those studies is it's very difficult. They're all based on cross-sectional data. Um, well, with the exception of these undergraduate theses. Um, and in the cross-sectional data, we can't tell apart selection versus treatment, right? So it can easily be it's just you know, some bad man, basically. They're both more likely to be unemployed, but they're also more likely to hit their wives. Um, the other problem is basically a data problem. There are a few, I mean, there's basically all, almost everything we know on domestic violence comes from cross-sectional data, and it's not like there's a good panel data set of domestic violence. So there's basically data constraints. Um, the second part of the literature I just wanted to briefly mention, there are other people who've, who've thought about domestic violence, kind of with different questions in mind. So the, the papers, uh, these papers are all about sort of relationship between unemployment and violence. And then there is a few sort of other kinds of domestic violence papers. So there's a recent paper by Cardin Dahl, which I think is very interesting. So what they're looking at is um, football losses. So your, if your home team, so the, your favorite team, loses unexpectedly, they find an uh, immediate increase in violence. You mean uh, football or? Football, as in American football. This is based on. U.S. data, American football. <laughs> but this is people watching. <laughs> this is people watching football in front of the TV, right? So they're sitting there with their spouse. They're upset the team loses, that their team lost, and apparently that escalates and sort of calls to the police increases right away. Um, so they really have um, you know hourly data. We, we, we have, this we call it the marriage marriage. <laughs> There is another um, recent paper by Anna Isa uh, who looks at changes in the gender wage gap and how that affects <laughs> violence. Um, and there, there are a few other papers from developing countries which are interesting on, for example, dowry violence in India. Um, there's also a paper by Angelucci on um, looking at um, um, Progressa data in, in Mexico or opportunidades now and showing, um, looking at the relationship of transfers to women on violence. Um, yeah. So she finds a non-monotone relationship, basically very large transfers to women can actually lead to more violence and small um, transfers lead to let, less violence. The interpretation there is if you give a small transfer that increases the outside option of women, so she has more bargaining power, violence goes down. But if it's very large, it sort of threatens the male identity 
and um, it leads to more. So basically, you could kind of regain, if you're a man, regain the bargaining power by sort of you know, engaging in violence. So that's, that's her finding. Anyone yeah. has look at the substitution patterns between public violence and domestic violence? Public violence and domestic yes, violence? I don't, I'm not aware. I'm not aware of any study, no. Um, so the, the, my point here is though that none of these papers have anything to say about the business cycle. Okay? So our contribution is we're looking at novel data um, from Sweden. Well, I mean, this, we're not the only ones using this data, but the only ones using this for this question. So this is administrative data from the healthcare sector from one particular region in, uh, in Sweden, namely Skåne. Uh, and we also have crime data from Sweden um, for a much longer time horizon. So we have this, um, because this health sector data is administrative data, so we know really um, day by day, basically. Um, so we can construct pretty detailed business cycle indicators from that. Um, just to, yes? We will have a report from, right? I mean, a lot of the serious violence doesn't get reported. Yeah, let's talk about that when I tell you exactly how we measure it in the data. Yeah, yeah, we'll only look at a small fraction of the most severe violence, only those that end up basically in a hospital or, or a doctor's office. Um, so that's only a small fraction, but we're interested in basically the elasticity over the cycle. And so to that extent, maybe we can extrapolate to a sort of less severe, it, it's not clear why that should, uh, the fraction of people going to the hospital, why should that systematically change over the cycle, right? So I think we can probably extrapolate to m lesser forms of violence from this. Right? So we're not so much interested in the level, but how the change happens over the cycle. Uh, so let me just briefly preview the findings. So we'll actually find a higher correlation of business cycle indicator, uh, indicators with uh, measures of domestic violence, and the magnitudes are pretty large. And then secondly, we'll use the data to shed some light on the mechanism. And um, here I think is where the analysis is still a little bit more preliminary, so I'll have lots of ideas what mechanism cannot be it. <coughs> Um, and some indication of maybe what's plausible, but uh, we, can, we can discuss. Okay. okay, very briefly some background on domestic violence in Sweden. So this is from a different study. This is one time cross-sectional study from other uh, people. It's called the Captured Queen study, where actually women were surveyed and asked in, in, in a lot of detail, have you ever experienced violence in the last year, ever in your life, what kind of, are we talking you know, sexual violence? Uh, emotional violence, um, physical violence, and so forth. Um, so from this study, we know it's actually a large fraction of women, so almost 50% have ever been subjected to violence in Sweden by a man since their 15th birthday, so it's a you know, severe problem. In the last year alone, 12% report this. So this is exactly, I think, what Kassas was getting at, that our data will get much smaller fractions because we're, you know, it's not survey data, this is really people who ended up in the hospital or at the doctor's office, so um, not everyone who is you know, hit once goes to the doctor. So we'll have only the most severe cases. So, but to keep this in mind, if we extrapolate, um, I think we get, can get a sense of the severity. Um, so this is like, so the ones who have ever been subjected to violence since their 15th birthday, yeah. So where this is not about child abuse, no. Um, so a lot of the perpetrators, so this is again, this is different data, but what they find, you know, a lot is present husband for, especially former husbands and boyfriends, um, yeah, but you know, yeah. Okay, so that was just by way of background, so let me now kind of go to our analysis and our data. So as I said, we have data from the largest region in Sweden, which is called Skåne, there's about um, I mean, it's, it's large, but you know, it's not bigger than LA, I guess, or you know, big cities. We have had, uh, one million, one and a quarter million people, and it is 13% of the Swedish population. As I said, it's administrative data, and we have basically 10 years of data. Ideally, you would like even more, but uh, there's quite some variation of unemployment over this 10 year period. Um, we have in, a comprehensive inpatient and outpatient uh, records with the um, international um, classification of disease codes. Um, and these codes include especially um, injury causes, so for example, assaults. Uh, in some cases, we also have information where these assaults took place, namely whether they happen at home. So just to give you an example, the code X99, 
would be a solved by a sh uh, sharp object. And then x99.0 would be a solved by a sharp object at all. Um, another, I think, interesting code is not directly domestic. Do you know, do you know whether it is uh, the husband or? No, we don't. But I'm going to try to argue why it's pretty reasonable to assume that. But we don't. Yeah, so I'll, I'll have a slide on exactly that point. So we'll try to convince you that it's, um, yeah. Um, we have another code I thought was pretty interesting. This is not directly domestic violence, but um, this code Z63 comes from problems in relationship with spouse or partner. So this is mostly from therapists. So right, this is not just hospital. We have the whole medical sector. So if you go, you know, uh, counseling because of uh, marital problems, um, that would be basically recorded in this code Z63, and I thought it'd be interesting to also see how that uh, varies over the cycle, because you could say that's maybe a pre-step. You already, you know, you have some conflict, you go to the counselor, and maybe if you can resolve it, eventually it ends up in violence. So that's his part of data, like, right? So you could see the Z63, yeah. you're going to see this for a couple at some point, and then you can see if that couple is more likely to... Right, that's a good point. We haven't done that yet, but that's an interesting point, yeah. So we're merging this um, administrative data from the healthcare system with the LISA registry, which is basically um, has a lot of information on individual characteristics. So that's a nice thing about Swedish data. You can merge everything. I mean, I guess you're all aware of this. Um, so we have a lot of information on, on these people. Um, yeah. We do, although I'm not going to be using that as much uh, um, as eventually today as, you know, so th <coughs> there's still some issues there. So I'm not going to be using it as much as one would like to uh, today. But um, we're also then merging it with aggregate um, employment indicators. So we have um, quarter quarterly municipal TD level unemployment rates and also um, um, well, and also we look at it for the whole region. So, but most of the analysis is going to be done on the municipality level. Um, how many municipalities? How many? Uh, I forgot, 20 maybe? 25? Something like one that? One very big city. <coughs> one more. And yeah. then some small ones, and then blue areas. That's basically Yes. Germany. But we can still use that regional variation. I mean, they're <laughs> smaller, but I mean. Um, S say again, what's the question? Are you not concerned about like migration issues when you're going to link like this reporting with like the fact that you were living there, but uh, I mean, probably there is like a movement. So, so if you're worried about people who are exposed to more violence, they are leaving the state or, or the municipality, I don't know. I don't really see the, the story there. No, I'm saying that you're going to link like an employment at the municipality level, but you can change the place. Right, but if it's not systematically related to violence, then I don't see why that's a problem. Well, it's not clear that it's not systematically related to violence, right? Maybe. Maybe. Let's talk about it afterwards. Um, we'll we're going to be focusing on women 14 years and older, so to rule out this or to not get into child abuse issues. Um, I mean, just start with some very basic descriptive data. So these are just to give you a sense of sort of what's there in the data. Um, so these are average annual occurrences of, the of what we call violence measures. And you know, this is where women are the uh, victims only. So if we look at all of the different assault codes, so there's a bunch of different, you know, this is by sharp objects, by bodily force, actually most of them are by bodily force. Um, then we have um, 385 cases on average per year, just to give you a sense of you know, how often these things occur. Obviously, it's much less than what I showed you in this um, cross-sectional study where people are asked, have you been subjected to, vi excuse me, to violence in the last year, right? So again, these are the most severe cases. Why do you want to not have child abuse in there? Isn't a lot of the violence against women kind of related also to, to children? Um, so I'm going to look actually, I'll come back to child abuse later. And I'm going to argue that actually child abuse um, does not vary over the business cycle, and I think we can potentially use that to distinguish between, you know, learn something about the mechanism. So right now I'm interested in sort of interpret partner violence. I'm interested in sort of do you hit your wife more and not do you hit your children more. But I think that distinction we can possibly use to learn something about the mechanism. And you don't restrict attention to marrying your wife? No. 
because actually, as I s showed you from this um, Captured Queen study, it seems a lot of the violence is ex-partners. And especially in Sweden, there's a lot of single mothers who still have, you know, contact with the partners because of the children. And then, you know, they, they do have to meet and that leads to violence. So I really don't want to rule those out. Yeah. The one for the violence in that study was coming from something called outside contact or something like that. What is that? 30% um, right. was coming from that. I don't know. Something else, yes. Okay, that's huge. I mean, it's a third of the sample. Um, yeah, in that other study, yeah. So let me, okay. So one other question. So what did people say? They come in uh, uh, bleeding or something. They say, yeah, I fell in the bathtub. How do you know? That's, I think a lot of people are going to say that. So how do you know that it's kind of? How it's what is it called an assault versus an accident, right? Well, you say so. Right. Yeah. So I think this is similar to my answer to Kass, Kassa's question. We're gonna look only at a. This is gonna be underreported, for many different reasons. A, you might not even go to the doctor. Even if you go to the doctor, you basically you might not admit what who caused it and what happened. So this is only the most severe cases. But the share is kind of constant. That's, That's how they're Yeah, why, why do you know so many times talking? Yeah, no, I'm, I was going to say that. So, yes, absolutely. Why should that share systematically well, change over the business in a second? Because if you really feel you're dependent on this guy, and the labor market conditions are absolutely appalling, mm -hmm. what that's my say? It's an accident. But if you're willing to kind of break up with this guy, also these are serious incidents. Then you say, uh, uh, you know, it was a, uh, it was a real assault. So, you know, it depends on, on what you... What yeah, so, right. So this, well, I'm not talking about calling the police. So there I think this would be a much more so severe issue. Well, no, they um, the and, no, this if, is... If you say that, you, that he, this guy uh, right. hits you uh, or, or punches you, they'll call the police. So there is no perpetrator information here, right? It's just, I was assaulted. I mean, there's no, they don't ask by who, for example. They don't, but well, if you don't know who was the perpetrator. Well, no, they would involve the police and ask you. You see, I don't see, you know, one thing you could do, of course, just to mitigate all this, is, is um, aggregate all injuries of women. So, yeah, uh, including uh, what's called, you know, accidents. Well, okay, okay. For example, the stairs, the bathtubs, Okay, no, I think that's a reasonable suggestion. So we'll look at that. Um, okay, so let me talk about what we actually did here. Um, so this conflict with partner, I thought that's an interesting variable. So there's about 262 cases per annum. If we wanted to know how severe it is per 10,000, so this all assaults measure is about, you know, seven and a half per 10,000 per, uh, per year, and even this conflict with partner, about five cases per, per 10,000, um, okay? Sure. So, just, yeah. Just on the same point, so are the medical doctors required to report the accident if they believe there might be some mistreatment of women? Because that happens in a lot of countries, and I'm pretty sure. My understanding was they don't have to, but I should double check that. You should double check that. Okay. Yes. Okay, so is an assault a good measure of domestic violence? There were some questions about that here. So A, I do want to point out, we're following um, Anna Isa's AR paper. Um, she uses actually hospita female hospitalizations due to assault. Um, so in that sense, we're actually very close to what she does in her AR paper, except um, we have not just hospitalizations, we have other, you know, you could just go to the doctor based on an assault. So we have a more comprehensive measure. But sort of the logic that we think, you know, most assaults where women are the victim is intimate partner violence, so she uses the same logic. Secondly, um, so you, you didn't cross tabulate the Z63 variable and the X99 variable, right? So isn't it more likely that a domestic partner violence is the Z63 is equal to one? Yeah, so Flavia was asking something similar, so we haven't done that yet, um, but we should, yes. Um, so as I said, in, in, we, in principle, there's location information. In practice, unfortunately, most of the time it's not filled out. So it's not recorded, maybe because people are worried about the police. Um, so, but for those cases when they say where it happened, 
right? So location could be it happened at home, it happened at school, it happened at work, it happened on the street. Um, so whenever it was reported, 73% of the cases did happen at home. So this is not assault by strangers. This is assault at least by someone who's living in the same household. Secondly, you could be worried that it might be father to daughter violence, um, right? So we're starting age, you know, 14. Um, however, I do want to point out most women, first, I mean, we look at the data, in the data most, and, and in the paper we have more details. I was just, in, in the interest of time, I just want to briefly say that most women beyond the age 20 do not live with their fathers. And then we looked also for those that do, is violence more likely conditional living arrangements? And it seems to be the same. So I think with that, you know, it seems unlikely this is all father to daughter violence. So, um, but in the end of the day, it's our interpretation that these assaults are, you know, so based on all of this, we think it's a reasonable interpretation, but we, you know, we don't know for sure, we don't have the perpetrator information. Yeah, so why do we particularly care if it's a husband or some other slave? Why do we want to do the assaults against domestic violence mm -hmm. against women from wherever it comes? Um, we could do that, I guess. We were trying to understand the mechanism. We thought it's something to do with household bargaining. That was our prior. And so in that sense, we thought this is about conflict between partners. Um, but you know, you're right. We could take a broader stand and say we're just interested in assaults against females more generally. Um, so. Attempted suicides in the area? No. I don't think an attempted suicide would be recorded as an assault. I don't think so. Um, Okay, so the empirical analysis, we're gonna um, do this sort of analysis on three levels, let's say. Um, first, analog to the macro business cycle literature, we'll just look at um, sort of correlations over the cycle with unemployment and GDP measures. Then we're gonna ex exploit the um, 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 variation across municipalities, so it's sort of a municipality level analysis. Um, and then we can also look at the individual level, right? So on the individual level, obviously selection could be a big issue, but I think on the aggregate level it's pretty clear if violence in general goes up, you know, during times of high unemployment, it seems very unlikely to think, un, you know, it's the violence that's causing the recession. That's, that seems kind of crazy, right, on the aggregate level. Um, so these are basically, so here we just followed sort of the standard business cycle methodology. We detrend variables. And then we show the correlations of the cyclical components. So this is like when people, you know, compute how does investment vary over the cycle, stuff like that, or consumption, um, that's sort of what they do. And so here we have our different measures of, you know, uh, um, violence. So this is all assaults, which I think is closest to, again, what Anna Isa was using in her paper. So I think that's maybe our best proxy of violence. And that varies a lot. You know, the negative relationship with GDP is quite high, minus point, uh, <laughs> seven, eight. And then with unemployment, it's also, and these are all significant. So no matter what, which of these measures you use, you get um, basically that when G, in this GDP per capita, I should say. So when GDP per capita is high, these measures of violence are low. And when unemployment is high, these measures, you know, go up. So that's sort of on a macro um, level, there is the correlation that we were expecting. Um, no, we do this on quarterly data. So 40, 40 observations. Yeah, I should have said that. Yeah. We also exploit spatial relation there. So the spatial, so the municipality level analysis is coming. So that's, that was my point. We kind of do this on these three different levels. So I started with this aggregate. We'll, we'll get to that if I, I, I should speed up. We have something on unemployment. Uh, sorry, on alcohol, yes. So just again, visual picture. Um, this is still this um, aggregate analysis and maybe I should skip it and kind of move on. Um, but here you see, so this is real GDP per capita and this is the measure of all assaults and I think it's pretty clear how these two are mirror images. So in periods of when GDP is high relative to the trend, um, this measure of assaults is low again relative to the trend and vice versa, right? So it's it pretty nice mirror images of each other. Uh, and here we have this other variable conflict with partner and this now I plot against unemployment. So they're, they're, they move very much in parallel. Um, but let's move on to maybe something more serious. Um, so here's the basic uh, baseline regression results. Again, on these three different levels of aggregation 
So here we have the aggregate data. You know, this is quarterly. And here, basically, we have 40 observations, as Lucius was pointing out. Then we have the municipality level regression. So we have 40 quarters, but now I forgot something like 20 municipalities. Well, we can also do sort of a probit regression on the individual level. Um, but as um, even here, we're using right now as an explanatory variable the municipality level unemployment rate. So this is not your own unemployment yet. Okay? Um, and so here we find, and so I'm just record, um, reporting the you know, regression coefficients for each of these basic regressions. I should have said uh, we have a time trend in here, and we control for seasonal effects. Um, and then we have this, um, in the municipality level regression, we have um, basically dummies for you know, fixed effects for each municipality. Okay? Um, so we find in each one of these ways of doing it, we find a positive large coefficient. Um, so to give you an idea of how large is this, sort of what's the elasticity, you did a basic simple calculation here. So if we just, you know, based on, on this coefficient here for the aggregate level, uh, regression, if we're going from an unemployment rate, let's say, of you know, 0.05, so 5% unemployment, if it goes up by 1%, percentage point, right? So unemployment from 5 to 6%, for example, then domestic violence in SCONA would go up. So just multiply this um, you know, by 0.01. So be like a third of a case per 10,000 women. Um, the baseline was here, again, in a quarter, two cases, almost two cases in a quarter, to be going up from 1.9 to 2.22. So that's an increase of 16%. Just to get a sense, you know, unemployment, one percentage point increase in unemployment would lead to 16% more domestic violence. I think that's large. What's the of unemployment? Of, um, I don't have it here right now. I mean, so you Sorry. Um, I just know the range. I think Sweden in this this time period. I think the lowest unemployment rate was something like um, four percent, and the highest is something like nine percent. So, but that's obviously not. This is across municipality or across time? Both. So I'm saying the min and the max of time and municipality. Well, okay. but that, that be, yeah, right. But, but the picture is Malmo, the big city, in this period went through very tough times. <laughs> the area there that are struggling, lots of uh, frustrating. That's well, by the way, where they were burning the cars <laughs> last month. And then you have the rural areas that are doing just fine. And you have some areas, some small towns that are... Uh, uh, your point is we are identifying everything uh, of Malmo. Is that your point? Well, I, I, I think I believe a bit more in the municipal uh, results perhaps. There should be a lot of power there. Okay. There's a lot of variation on the municipal uh, uh, level. Perhaps more than... There's perhaps more cross-sectional right. variation than there is time variation. Um, okay. Yeah. So... Should the unemployment So we didn't look for we didn't do that, but we are gonna look at different lack of unemployment. So let me get to that. Um, okay. So right now, I think I've, I've tried to convince you that there is a positive relationship and the magnitudes are large. And I think it's pretty robust. At least you can't argue that it's all selection because it, it also holds on the aggregate level. So now our aim is to try to understand what's the mechanism. Why is this happening? Um, and so here, we put a bunch of different hypotheses on the table. And I'll try to get at them. Um, and if people have ideas on how to do it even better, I'm very open to suggestions. But so one idea would be this sort of emotional cue story. So kind of extrapol using the same idea as Card and Dahl. You know, they said you get upset because your home team lost, you hit your wife. Easily you could also get upset because you lost your job, you're aggressive, and it's a direct emotional sort of reaction. Okay? If, if that was the main channel, so basically nothing strategic, nothing to do with trying to achieve something. It's just you're upset, you're aggressive, you hit your wife. A, I think I would expect an immediate response. So the, I think this, you know, it cannot be a delayed response. Why? Um, you, you 
think you can find a new job. But then six months later, you realize. No. Okay, well, it depends on exactly how do you define the emotion cues channel, right? But what I meant now is you learn something new, something bad happened, and you get aggressive without thinking, right? So that's kind of, th that's their story that in terms of the football losses, it's, it happens immediately. This is within, I think, minutes. Yes. So this is like a direct psychological reaction, nothing to do with, uh, you know, strategic behavior. So to rule that out, at least, or to look at that, I would expect, A, an immediate response, and also, I think this is, I was trying to allude at that earlier, I would expect similar effects on women and children. Because it just means you're upset, you can't control yourself. So, you know, even child abuse should also increase uh, other forms of violence. Second, it could Can be a... you say immediate response to what? The unemployment experience? Yes. A guy comes home and he just got unemployed. And right. That's the period what's going to happen. Right. That's what I mean. But yes. The point, the point, though, of aggression is that it does take into account of the victim. So these aggressive guys, they don't just go on, you know, and, and knock, you know, uh, you know, hit anybody in the street. They go for the soft targets. So that, that that kind of argument that you know is going to be similar against any. Well, okay, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have said any victim, but, you know, w I would expect something similar to you, towards your own children. It's an emotional response, and you have emotions towards your wife, you have emotions towards your children, and they might be very different. Where do you get your frustration? And, 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 Let me put it differently. So the second, an, uh, an alternative story would be, it's a strategic, you're strategically trying to achieve something. You're trying to change your bargaining you know, situation in the household. So this is basically what Anna Isa was arguing in her paper. So relative wages of men and women play a large role. So if men really use violence strategically, then I would expect no or little effect on children. Why? Why? <laughs> to get something from your wife by threatening to... <laughs> okay. Yeah, so maybe in the end we'll have to write down a model to clarify yeah, all these yeah, channels. Yeah, yeah. So let me show you what we find. So an alternative, and which doesn't seem to fit e either yeah. here or here, two other sort of channels could be through, someone mentioned this before, alcohol consumption could go up in recessions and that makes people more you know, likely to uh, may lose control, let's say or depression rate, so this is kind of more long-term, let's say, emotional kind of strategy, right? Um, so we have data on this, so I'll, I'll show you something here. Yeah. So we don't have that data here, but other people have argued that's actually not the case. So um, unemployed people don't spend more time with each other, right? You're absolutely right. That could be the most direct channel, right? You're unemployed, you spend more time together. If there's a constant hazard rate, then just mechanically it would go up. And in, at least in other contexts, people have argued that cannot be the story. But we don't have the data on Sweden for that. Um, yeah. So no, and if people have other stories, I'm happy to discuss maybe over lunch. I mean, I'm, we're still look brainstorming, and maybe there's other mechanisms one can think of. Okay. That's an, yeah, maybe. Okay. Can think about that. So the first thing we did here is to get a sense of sort of the speed of reaction. So we, um, this is the individual, this is individual level regressions, although I guess it could have done it for the municipality level too. And now we put in, these are each, each of these rows is a different regression. Um, but with different lagged unemployment in it now. So this is the contemporaneous unemployment rate, then we have one quarter lag, two, three, four. Um, so what you see here, at least, the regression coefficient is the largest for the one quarter lag and also the most significant. Um, so in that sense, it seems as there is quite a lag in the reaction. Um, no, this is still municipality level unemployment. Yeah. Um, so in general, it, it takes, let's say, uh, it takes some time. So I think, at I would interpret that as evidence against this, or, or 
it only being this direct emotion cues, in, at least in this context. Um, okay? Oops. Yeah. So then, as a um, possible channel, we looked at you know, depression. So depression, we actually have in the data, we have diagnostic codes from the health data on where you, you know, diagnose by, with clinical depression. So the idea, so, so for this to be a channel, so if unemployment caused depression, depression caused violence, you, what we would expect in the data, first we need to find a correlation between depression and unemployment, otherwise you know, can't really be the channel. Uh, we also need that depression and domestic violence is related. Um, and then to make it str stronger, um, the explanatory power of the unemployment um, variable on domestic violence should decrease once we also put depression into the regression, right? So these are the three things, you know, for this to be a major channel, that's what you'd expect. Um, so we do look at this because, our, as I said, our data has um, depression diagnosis codes. So what we're doing here is we calculate also municipality level um, depression rates, and then we, we do our municipality level regressions, including these depression rates. Um, so here's what we find. So each column here is a different regression. So this very first one is really just to look at is depression and unemployment actually related. And yes, it is. There is a positive. So during, you know, when unemployment is high, depression rates are higher. This is pretty, you know, large and significant. Um, however, when we look at the relationship between domestic violence and depression, we find nothing. These don't seem to be related. Um, this was our baseline. Um, regression from the municipality. So I'm just re replicating. I showed you this one before. Um, now let's redo this just in case. I mean, this already seems like seems an unlikely channel just based on this. But you know, just to check, if we put these depression rates in that same regression, this coefficient basically doesn't change or very little. Um, I, I just asked, that's depression by men and women? Or just no, this is just men. Yes, good, good. No, that was a, yeah, sorry, I should have said that. These are uh, male depression rates based on our diagnostic code. So we calculated uh, per 10,000 men um, or for each quarter, each municipality. But uh, it's because people are depressed, they do nothing. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly yeah, my point. So I think... But you should try to find some other measure of I don't know, frustration. Um, no, but that would be... for example, that might be... Right. That could be another channel, right? So right now I'm just saying, like the clinical depression at least doesn't seem to be a channel because it seems, as you said, people... You know, different people react differently. Some men, you maybe become unemployed, you become depressed, and then you don't do anything. And others become aggressive and hit their wives. So it's an either or thing. It doesn't seem to be a channel. But if it takes quite a while to be diagnosed with clinically yeah, depressed, like when you're depressed, you probably don't go for the first yeah. six months to get a diagnosis, and you might want to try lying in the depression market. OK, we can do that. Sure. Um, yeah. No, we, we want to. So it's on the to-do list, but there are some issues right now because we have a couple of years missing data on the tech. We'll do it. Yeah. Wait. That, no, that's on definitely something we'll do. Well, we just have to solve some technical issues. Um, second, what about alcohol? So could alcohol be a channel? So could it be that unemployment leads to heavy drinking and that leads to more violence? By the way, so in um, um, Angelucci's paper of Mexico, she did find this was an important channel in that context. <coughs> so you know what could be happening here too. Um, again, so very similar to the, um, to, to the analysis of depression, for this to be a channel, we need sort of the right correlations between alcohol and unemployment and alcohol and violence. And again, you know, what would happen if we, in our baseline regression we include alcohol now, um, does the explanatory power change? So how do we get data on alcohol? So we actually um, first, I mean, we have two different measures of alcohol use. One is actually alcohol sales we got from this is system, Bolaget, <coughs> I think that's a um, Swedish, um, I mean, I think everything in al all alcohol sales in, in Sweden is essentially through the government. And so they have pretty good data on alcohol sales. And it's really nice, this data was already converted by them in liters of pure alcohol. So this is not dollar sales. 
um, but this is actual sort of alcohol consumption in some sense, right? So, um, uh, so, so converting basically whiskey and beer and wine, everything in the same units. Um, that's, well that's kind of wrong. Is, that's wrong? Yeah, because uh, I think the, the, the concentration of alcohol in the brain and how you metabolize it is a lot. I think I'd rather have a, I'd rather have a, a guy at home drinking beers rather than drinking uh, vodka. I see. Even if they drink the same amount of alcohol. Just because you basically get more water in it, and so it metabolizes yeah, it differently. It matters, okay. So okay. Another concern in Sweden: lots of people buy alcohol with Terry somewhere else because of the high taxes, especially especially in Malmo. Well, it's exactly right because it's so close. It's cheaper in Denmark and it's so close right. between Malmo yeah. and Copenhagen. No, so it's not a perfect measure of alcohol consumption. I agree. Um, so we have a second measure, just for robustness. Although it's uh, in some sense even worse, I think or has other issues. So even from the healthcare data, we do have some information on sort of alcohol-related diseases. So we look at those diagnostic codes also. However, I mean, these are all pretty long-term chronic diseases, right? I mean, this, yes, exactly. Yeah. One thing you could use is a car accident. Car accident. Yeah, huh? that, that should be immediate. Car accident? I don't understand. Driving while drunk. Oh, but yeah, so it has to be specific alcohol-related car accidents, right? I don't know. If so that data is collected. Yeah, they collect. They collect. Ah. Are you excited? What you can do? If you don't, if you go wrong, the police will come take you and put you in jail for the night. It is a, it's an institution. And Corfilas, this drunk So I'm sure they have data on how many people have been. Okay, we'll try to find that data, yes. So, so right now we have these two different measures of alcohol alcohol sales, the, you know, in units of pure alcohol, liters of pure alcohol, and then our healthcare diagnostic codes. And again, uh, we do this municipality level regressions. So this is, very, this is the same kind of type of table that I just showed you for depression. First of all, when unemployment goes up, actually alcohol sales, in, at least in pure uh, units of alcohol, seems to go down here. So this is exactly. So people probably can't afford it. Exactly. So at least in this time period in Sweden, it seems people don't drink more in bad times. Well, by the question is whether individuals are drinking more. I mean, it's individuals who drink might be drinking more, and other people drink very little. No, alcohol on the individual level. I don't think anyone's collecting that. It's not um, point. They, they, buy, they buy less since the same logic, and perhaps. Perhaps, yeah. I don't have information data on that, but if someone has a good source for that, I'd be happy to include it. Do they, make um, their their own own? Do they what? Do they make their own? Their own. <laughs> 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 yeah, and then you go out and collect that data. Good luck. Um, <laughs> Alcohol sales and domestic violence also don't seem to be, so, so this goes the wrong direction. This doesn't seem to be related at all. Um, again, subject to the caveat, they could be buying it from abroad. Um, that, that's, that is a caveat or a concern. And then finally, if you put in alcohol sales, I mean, I guess that's not very surprising. This coefficient on, on unemployment on domestic violence doesn't change, okay? So people, yeah, so my interpretation, I mean, Subject to the caveat with the data, uh, it seems that people don't drink more when they're unemployed because I guess they can't afford it. Um, okay. Is there a kind of drinking that, uh, so if you just know been drinking at home and drinking in the bar, which, which are both of those associated with increased domestic violence or one uh, more than the other? <coughs> what? So that people substituted for drinking at home when they're drinking when unemployed. Right. So. But then, uh, then you would still expect uh, this coefficient to be well, positive, right? Well, the alcohol sales might not change. It just changes where you buy it. I see. Yeah. So if you have a good idea where to get data on drinking at home versus in a bar, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. You can look at sales for bars. Sales for bars. <laughs> I don't know of anyone yeah, collecting that. Okay. Calculate some municipality level indicators and then match them with this. So if. Well, I 
Yes. Yeah, so, so there's microsurvey data on that, so I'll ask you later. If it, if I, I'm not aware of that information being public. Um, all right. Um, so we get so if people have a strong prior this being related, and it's just I'm not picking it up with this data, and we we could dig deeper, I guess. Yeah. Um, I did want to uh, in the last five minutes here just briefly. Um, tell you about another data also in Sweden that we've also been using and here we can look at children versus women separately also and I thought we can interpret that as you know that distinction meaning something about strategic behavior but I understand there are some other um, uh, ideas here in the room but let me briefly tell you so we have also Swedish crime data and this is actually this is from the uh, Swedish National Council from Prime Pre Crime Prevention so this is not individual level data right this is just aggregate data so you can't correlate it with anything um, but the, the nice thing is much longer time horizon so basically you have almost 30 years of data here so uh, and again it's it's yeah so we have many more observations um, for for the whole um, for the whole country in fact so there we have assaults that it happened indoors against women by a known person. So again, and we think that's a pretty good proxy of domestic violence. Um, and we also have sort of more severe version of that, which is the aggravated assault. Um, but again, it's not, they don't uh, tell us exactly who was the per perpetrator, but it did happen at home and it's by someone they know. So chances are this is an intimate partner. But um, So, and then we have this same thing against children, little children. Um, so first, if we do kind of the same type of regressions, again, this is on an aggregate level now, we do find that unemployment is positively related with these assaults. So uh, first thing to note, I think this is sort of a robustness check. This is totally different kind of data, right? Before we were looking at the healthcare system, now we're looking at basically reports to the police. Um, so this, this is positive and significant. And now we looked at it separately now for children of different ages. Um, so children under 6, children 7 to 14, or children under 14, okay? And all of these are not um, positively related to unemployment. So again, um, I understand maybe you want to hold the children hostage to achieve something from your wife. I wasn't thinking about that. I mean, um, my interpretation so far was this could potentially be evidence against the, um, uh, in favor of a strategic motive. So you're trying to, you know, when, when you're not feeling good, um, you're trying to somehow, you know, hit your wife to achieve something, but your children are exempted. Like, you don't change your behavior towards your children. Yeah? So you look at uh, effects on violence against women, against children. Why not also look at uh, assaults from men? Just to see if it's a yeah, that's something we're planning to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, so I guess I'm pretty much done. So let me just summarize. Um, so, it's, so what we've done is an empirical analysis of domestic violence using interesting data, novel data from Sweden. Uh, we look both at the aggregate crime data, but also at administrative data from the health system. The main finding is there is a sizable effect. I think we're the first one to actually document this. So as I said, an, a one percentage point increase in unemployment would lead, depending on exactly how you measure it, so we had a bunch of different, you know, re analysis on different levels, municipality or aggregate or individual even. Uh, so domestic violence would go up somewhere between 8 and 16 percent. So I think that's pretty sizable. Um, in terms of the mechanism, as you saw, this is a little bit preliminary. But we, we think the strategic motive seems pretty likely because of this delayed effect. Um, the channel does not seem to be through alcohol or depression. And also, we don't see more violence against children. So um, I think the strategic motive, to me at least, seems kind of plausible. Um, what we still have to do and want to do is sort of make more use of the individual level data. So could we, you know, we could compare potentially own versus partner unemployment, um, and also do much more detailed analysis by age, education, marital status, and so forth. And, and maybe that's going to tell us something more about the channel as well. But we haven't done that yet, or there, there were some issues. So. Thanks.